hat. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Did you guys hear that? So let me grab it, hold on. So you remember I told you guys that my uh, ficus elastica was opening up a new leaf? It's actually in the process of opening and I don't know if the mic picked it up, but I could actually hear it like Velcro, uncurling, unfurling. So yay, I'm so excited, I love you. All right, back to the purpose of this video. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be potting up some long overdue baby plants, some new cuttings, some cuttings that have been sitting for way too long, so I thought I'd go ahead and bring you along as I pot up some of my baby plants. Before I get into it, if you guys don't mind taking a minute, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for the notifications so you know when I'm posting my new videos, and as always, like this video. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start potting up some plants together. So I do have my uh, potting mix if you would like to see kind of what that consists of be sure to check out my other potting plant video I'll make sure I link to it somewhere up here down below somewhere go check that out and I'll make sure I link to all the potting soils and all the products and everything I use down below um, the first plant that I have to uh, pot up today is my little baby Maranta, my little prayer plant. I did already go ahead and remove all the old soil. It was in a terracotta pot. It's now moving on to a new home, so I thought I would repot it and go ahead and put it in one of these plastic ones so that I can save that terracotta pot for myself. So I usually just fill it up, depending on how much root system, how deep I'm gonna do it, mm, halfway, somewhere around there. Um, full of potting soil. I go ahead and put the plant in, place it how I want, and it's much more difficult doing this on camera than it is doing it in my garage, but I wanted you guys along for the journey today. So this particular plant and then a couple others are actually going to a student of mine who also loves house plants, um, so I thought I would kind of declutter, deplant a little bit by passing some on to her. So this one and some of my Hoyas, some of my other things are gonna go to her. Um, and some of them will actually end up on my Etsy shop, um, especially the Hoya Bellas seem to be very popular there. I'll make sure to link to my Etsy shop down below. I like to transplant them from water into soil for a week or two, um, just to make sure they're on their way. And then I actually do ship them um, somewhat bare rooted, maybe a little soil clinging on there, um, just cause it's cheaper. It, we're not taking up so much weight, just shipping soil from one state to another. I always make sure to press the top down um, just a little bit, make sure I get out any of those little air pockets. If you water and you notice um, that there's a big sinkhole happening immediately after you repot it, you probably just didn't pack it down. You don't wanna pack it down too tight um, because obviously you want the plant to have some air to breathe, but you do wanna make sure it's in there nice and secure. So there is my little red prayer plant um, ready to go to his new home and he is all set. All right, the next plant that I think I'm going to pot up for you guys um, is one that's been way overdue for a repotting. Finally, it's doing really, really well, um, and it is ready to move back into soil. So this is my lipstick plant. I don't know exactly which variety. This was um, a rescue plant from an old roommate of mine. Um, she had a big, beautiful plant when she lived here, and um, then moved into a new home that didn't have the beautiful light that I have here and her poor little lipstick plant started dying. It was in too big of a pot once it started dying down. Um, it was getting overwatered, suffered from root rot. I cut it back. Even the cuttings were starting to rot back a little ways. I thought maybe he wouldn't make it, but he is. His name is Tiny Tim. 
Um, for somewhat obvious reasons, I wasn't sure if he was going to survive or not. Um, but now I think Tiny Tim is probably not going to be so tiny anymore. So let's go ahead and find a new home for him. I think I will go ahead and put him in one of these slightly larger pots. I know it's probably a little bit too big um, at this point, but at this point the root system is getting pretty extensive here and he will stay here in my brightest room getting really, really bright indirect light. So I think as long as I keep an eye on the water levels and the watering, I think he'll be okay in the slightly bigger pot. Then I don't have to repot him again in just a couple of months here. So tell me a little bit in the comments below, how is the beginning of your school year going? Whether you are, yourself are in school, maybe you also teach or you have a, a student, a, a kid in school. Um, I feel like I kind of get two brand new years, right? So I have new years where we actually start to celebrate celebrate the start of the um, new calendar year, but then I also have the new school year. Um, and I feel like it's such a great opportunity to just kind of start fresh and, and get back into the swing of things. This year for me has already gotten pretty crazy. Um, just so much, I do some extracurricular activities at school, um, so I am there pretty much 24 seven um, until next summer, basically. All right, so I'll just finish up pressing down here on the top. I'm glad I went with a slightly larger pot size. Like I said, I'll just have to keep an eye on, out on the watering for the first um, couple of weeks here. Make sure that I'm not overwatering it. But I think this will really start to flourish now that um, he's in his brand new home. I think Tiny Tim will pull through. I think he's gonna make it. All right, so the next plants that I have are uh, Pothos and my Skindapsis. Both have just giant root systems here, ready to be planted, ready to be in their new homes. And I do have some of these lovely tiny little pots. Um, I get these for about 40 cents at my local nursery. They're really great for starting out some of these smaller plants, moving them from water propagation into the soil. Um, so let's start with, I believe this is the pearls and the jade pothos. So it started to put out new leaves. This one was just a one leaf, one node cutting. It's put out some new leaves. Like I said, it's got this extensive root system. So I think he is more than ready to be in his new home. This one, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the soil back out and actually make a little hole here just because these roots are so big, so long, I want to make sure that they have enough space here that they can start to spread out and take over. And again, I'm just pressing down the top, making sure to get out any of those big air pockets, making sure it's also sturdy. Sometimes if you don't pot them down in there quite well enough, they can fall over and then they just don't look as pretty. They're not the way you placed them originally. So I wanna make sure that he stays right here in center. He'll probably have to be repotted um, in a few months, but with Pothos, I'm not so worried. He can be a little bit root bound for a while, maybe till next spring, um, and he'll be ready to be repotted. Such a cute little plant, I love him. I don't know if I wanna give him away. He's just so perfect and small. All right, and we'll move on to the uh, Skindapsis, the Silver Pothos, Satin Pothos. Right, such a beautiful plant. Again, started from a one root, uh, one leaf, one node cutting, um, and has grown this glorious long root system. Just so ready to be in his new home. I've been putting this off. I've had a few actually sitting since the last time I did my repotting video. Um, just got kind of busy over the summer, um, let them hang out in water. I didn't want to repot them right before I was out of town, which I was quite a bit over the summer. So some of these are a little bit overdue, I think, to be potted up and they will be very happy to be here in soil instead of hanging out in my propagation station. So this one, I am going to go ahead and let hang a little bit over the edge. The big mother plant that this came from also really enjoys that trailing over the edge. Not so much like a traditional pothos that actually kind of grows up, bushes out, and then trails. Um, I found this one really likes to hang over the edge, so I'll make sure he has a little edge that he can grow down over. 
Let's see, what else do I have here that needs to be potted up? All right, let's go ahead and pot up. This one is way overdue. And again, I think I'm gonna put this in one of those larger pots. I don't have so many of those small pots left. I definitely wanna save some for my Hoyas. So I think I'm going to put the polka dot plant in a little bit larger pot. Look at this big root system. Again, way, way, way overdue to be put in soil. So we'll scoop some in there. I'll just keep an eye on this one. The polka dot plant is super fun. I um, have mine outside right now, which is probably why you didn't see it in my house plant tour. Um, I let it get a little bit dramatic. I let it wilt the whole entire way. And when it starts to wilt, then I water it. So I think I will probably do something very similar with this guy. Let him get a little weak, a little wilty, and ask me for more water before I water him, especially since he's in such a large container. So another way you can accommodate if a, if a container is maybe a little bit too large for a plant is to not fill it up all the way. It's full, maybe up here to about this line, and I've packed it down a little bit. Um, I don't think he needs much more soil than that, but I did want to make sure that I got him in soil as soon as possible. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and switch it up to these teeny tiny little terracotta pots. I got these, I think it was like three or four for a dollar at the dollar store. Um, I know they're probably gonna dry out pretty quickly, but they're very, very inexpensive. Um, and I think for some of my little plants, especially I have a couple of um, plants that prefer it a little bit drier down here. So I think maybe I will try that out. So the first one that I'm gonna go ahead and put in there and give it a try is another cutting from my watermelon peperomia. I have a couple of these leaves that are just a little sad. They're just, you know, a little beat up, but they're still healthy. And they actually have been putting out really nice root systems for me. This is such a fun and popular plant. I thought I would go ahead and pot it up for you. So this one doesn't need a whole lot of soil. Like I said, I probably will have to keep an eye on these. They do dry out a little bit on the quick side. Um, but especially for like the peperomias and even my Hoya to, <clears throat> excuse me, and even my Hoya to some extent, um, prefer it a little bit on the dry side. So I think they'll do fine for what I want right now. So there's my little teeny tiny baby um, watermelon peperomia. I'll give you an update on Instagram on how these plants are doing in the tiny pots, whether or not they're worth it. If they start to decline, I'll just run down to the nursery and go get some more of the plastic ones. But I think it's just about the right size for these little one leaf cuttings. All right, I think the other one that I'm gonna go ahead and put in there is another one that's a little bit overdue. It's my Peperomia Rosso. So if you saw my Hertz unboxing, there were a ton of these leaves that just exploded everywhere. Um, and some of them I put in soil propagation that are doing okay. Um, and then this one had a nice long stem, so I stuck it in water. So he's got all these little tiny baby leaves coming off of it. And I'm gonna do my best to kind of get some of that above the soil. So we'll see how that goes. When they're this small and they're this essential to the growth, I don't really want to chop them off yet. Um, I know sometimes some of these leaves can rot if they're under the soil, but I don't necessarily want to do that here in this situation. So I'm going to try to almost perch them on top, maybe just slightly below the soil um, and see if they'll go ahead and push through like they would on a plant that had actually grown up out of the soil. All right, so I don't know if you can see that down in there. So some of those leaves are just barely starting to poke above the soil. Again, I'll keep an eye on this one, maybe tap it down a little bit extra um, and make any adjustments as I need to. I That's the reason I like to make sure that I'm potting these up when I'm home for a week or two uh, before I would water them and even leave for a weekend. Um, just in case they do start to decline, I can make any adjustments right away instead of coming back three or four days later and they're pretty much dead. All right, let's see what else I have that has roots on them. I have a couple more little plants over here that don't quite have roots on them. 
but we'll see some fresh ones and I probably will actually take some more cuttings sometime over the next couple weeks once I kind of empty out some of my cuttings I like to take a few more let me know if there's a particular plant you would like me to take some cuttings of and do that on camera I'd be more than happy to I think I have a couple begonia leaves that might be ready for some cuttings and most of my Hoyas have a few longer tendrils that I could take cuttings of. Um, so if there's something you'd like to see me take some cuttings of and see me propagate, please let me know to, please let me know down in the comments below. All right, probably the moment you're all here for. My Hoya Bella, this one, I take cuttings, it grows. I take more cuttings, it grows. They're really popular on my Etsy page. And I did wanna give a couple cuttings to my student as well. You can see there's plenty of roots down in there. It takes me maybe a week to 10 days to get roots that look like this on the Hoya Bella. It just propagates for me. It could go forever. It's the never ending plant. So I think I will give my student a cutting in one of these nice plastic black um, pots. I will probably give it to her early this week and I want to give her the most chance of success um, since she is newer to the Hoya world. So I'll just pull a couple of these that have some nice roots on them. And when they're this small, they're super easy. I almost just even stick them down in the soil and then fill up the top. I don't have to dig a hole. They just kind of stick themselves down in there. Again, I might take a couple of the lowest leaves if they look like they're going to be underneath the soil. But for the most part, I try to actually cut those off when I'm in the process of taking the cuttings so that I don't have to do that when my hands are all covered with soil and I'm in the middle of making a mess. So I did end up just pinching off one of the leaves that looked like it was going to be a little below the soil. And there we go, a little baby Hoya Bella to pass on to one of my students. I have a couple more that I'm going to pot up really quick here. Again, I'll probably give them a couple of weeks to just readjust. I'll make sure that they're doing well. You know, if I'm gonna send out plants to people, I want to make sure that they're the healthiest plants that I could possibly send um, and to give people the best chance at success with them. So I definitely want to make sure that they're kind of readjusted to the soil, that they're not going to um, die in transit. So I will give them a little week or two here. We'll see how they do in the terracotta pots. The last couple that I potted up were in those black plastic ones. They did fantastically. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on these and see if I need to water them at all, a little bit extra. So we'll see. All right, so there's one. These pots are so small. They're just so easy and quick to fill. Um, I know Hoya don't necessarily go in terracotta pots, um, but for the purposes of this video, for the amount of time they're gonna be in there, they're really just gonna be in here until they sell and then they would be um, kind of taken out of their pot and packaged up and ready to send. This one looks like it's three cuttings, but this one's actually one uh, cutting that I took that had two kind of uh, stems coming off of it and then a third little piece coming in there. So a nice full one for somebody. And just a little bit here in the pot. It looks like I'm going to have just about the right amount of pots, which never happens. I don't plan these videos. I was just like, I need to film a video. I'm going to sit down. I have some time. What am I going to film? Oh yeah, I have stuff I have to pot up. Um, so I don't plan ahead for these videos. We'll just tap, 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 put these in here, try to get them towards the middle a little bit make a little bit of a mess. I'm covered in soil. Meeting a friend for lunch after this. So yeah, that's about how my day goes. How are your days going? All right, and then quick and easy, there's another little Hoya Bella potted up. And I have two more little cuttings. So one more little pot here. And there's my last little Hoya Bella cutting ready to be thriving in soil instead of water. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy watching me pot up some of these baby plants. If you want to see me taking the cuttings as well as then getting to see them get potted up, um, I'm always happy to do that. I know you guys really enjoyed the plant tours and I do have plans to maybe drive out of town this next weekend here um, and see if I can grab a, couple, a little bit of footage at some nurseries that are maybe about an hour away. We'll see how my schedule lines out with that. They are coming. I just have to find the time to do them since I have to drive and they're not here in town. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much again for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.